Let's take a look at this problem, taken from the Panda Mathematical Competition 2017. It says, let q0 of x equal to 1, q1 of x equal to x, and for all integers n that are at least 2, qn of x equals qn minus 1 of x whole squared minus 1, all divided by qn minus 2 of x. So given this recurrence relation, show that for all natural numbers n, qn of x is a polynomial of integral coefficients. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. This is a very classical recurrence relation problem, and it is related to polynomials. So before I really get into the problem, maybe I should uh, really um, test whether the statement actually holds for some small, small values of n. So for example, for Q2, and it will become uh, Q1 of x whole squared minus 1 over Q0 of x, which is uh, x squared minus 1 over 1, which is obviously uh, satisfying the required uh, the requirement, which is that it's a polynomial of integral coefficients. Now, like the next one is Q3 of x, which is then, I should uh, skip some details for this part, uh, x squared minus 1 whole squared minus 1 over x, and that's x to the 4 minus 2x squared plus 1 minus 1 over x, and it's x to the 4 minus uh, some errors, um, x cubed minus 2x. And as for q4 of x, and it would be x cubed minus 2x whole squared minus 1 over x squared minus 1. This is a bit hard. It will become x cubed minus 2x plus 1 times x cubed minus 2x minus 1 over x minus 1 and x plus 1. And in fact, um, they are going to be simplified in this pattern. So eventually we will have x squared plus x. And then of course we have minus 1 times x squared minus x and minus 1. So again, we still have that to be a polynomial of integral coefficients. So, um, so we're kind of convinced that um, this statement is uh, probably true. Now, uh, back to the main problem is that this is a recurrence relation. So we have to make good use of this property by um, splitting the varying parts and the constant parts. The varying parts, uh, I mean the varying parts by things that are related to n because this relation holds for arbitrary integers n that are at least two. So I should put these terms in one side on one side and the other terms which are actually constant on the other side. So for this recurrence relation, I'm going to rewrite in this form. So no matter how n changes, uh, let how the left hand side changes, the right hand side will still be minus one. So in particular, I can write q n of x times q n of two q n of q n minus two of x minus q n minus one of x whole squared would then equal to q n plus one of x q n minus one of x minus q n of x whole squared. I can achieve this by simply replacing n by n plus one. So moving up by one um, index, um, say moving to the next term of the sequence, then I have already uh, got this equation. So now I rearrange the terms. I would choose to move the qn of x to left hand side. 
so that I have something to factorize. And the left hand side would then equal to qn of x times qn minus 2 of x plus qn of x whole squared, which then would equal to qn plus 1 of x, qn minus 1 of x plus qn minus 1 of x whole squared. Now, as I said just now, I'm going to factorize. And this is what I got. Now again, I can um, rewrite both sides, um, maybe um, rearrange the terms a bit. So again, I would I can achieve some kind of uh, recurrence. Mm. Is that q n of x plus q n minus two of x over q n minus one of x would then equal to this. Again, it's just like moving uh, the left hand, the terms on the left hand side, uh, to the next term of the sequence, which is q n moving it to q n plus one, q n minus two moving to q n minus one, and q n minus one moving to q n. So, in fact, I have another kind of a recurrence relation, which is that this part, no matter how n changes. It's always the same. So in particular, I can replace now replace n by some very small number, say uh, the smallest one, which is two, and would equal to q two of x plus q zero of x over q one of x, and that's actually uh, q two from the results above is x squared plus one, x squared minus one, and then plus one over x, and so this red block actually equals to x, no matter how n changes. So therefore, for all n that is at least 2, we have qn of x equals x times qn minus 1 of x minus qn minus 2 of x. So we have um, a non-fractional uh, recurrence relation, and this guarantees that um, as long as qn minus 1 and qn minus 2 are polynomials of integral coefficients, then under this new relation, qn of x must be must also be um, a polynomial of integral coefficients. So now, since q0 and q1 are polynomials of integral coefficients, by induction, qn of x are also of this form for all non-negative integers. But before we finish, maybe we can check whether um, this is cons this result. This result is consistent with what we have um, achieved at the beginning. So now for q not is c uh, is one q1 is x, q2 is then x times x minus 1, which is x squared minus 1, q3 is x times x squared minus 1 minus x, which is x cubed minus 2x, so far so good, and we have q4 to be x times x cubed minus 2x minus x squared minus 1, and that's x to the 4 minus 3x squared plus 1. And in fact, if we expand the factorized form we've got above for q4, we will have x to the 4, um, x cubed will vanish, and then we will have minus x squared, minus x squared, minus x squared, again, minus 3x squared, and then minus x, and then plus x, x will vanish again, and finally plus 1. So in fact, uh, we are all good. So we know that. Uh, the things we have done um, all the way are correct, and so, yay, we are done. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now. Thank you for your support. See you next time.